Avalon. Avalon, the ever-distant utopia, Sabit Toki Risokyo Avarin, is the hallowed scabbard of Excalibur, the embodiment of the utopia King Arthur seeks, originally stolen from her shortly before the Battle of Camlin due to the machinations of Morgan Le Fay. It is a luxurious piece of equipment made of gold and decorated with blue enamel that seems more like a treasure to show dignity and nobility like a crown or staff than a weapon. No one knows what kind of divine mystery it is made from, but it was created by fairies along with Excalibur, an inscription written in fairy letters engraved on its center to show that it is not the work of man. It bequeaths limited immortality through constant regeneration, as well as preventing physical deterioration caused by aging. The Utopia Avalon was thought to be derived from the island that produced the Apple of Immortality in Greek mythology. The noble phantasm is not like one brought forth from the throne of heroes with the heroic spirit or actually possessed by King Arthur due to her unique status. It is the genuine artifact that was lost to her, it was found by Richard I during his life and stored in a box, centuries later it was excavated in Cornwall at the request of the Einsburns shortly before the Fourth Holy Grail War. It is still in pristine condition after 1,500 years, though it no longer functions without a connection to its original owner. Used as a catalyst to summon Artoria as a Saber-class servant, its existence is kept hidden from her. It is later used to save the life of Shiro Amiya at the end of the Fourth Holy Grail War, and it is once again used as a catalyst to summon her during the Fifth Holy Grail War. The holder of the scabbard is granted potent healing, allowing for critical and fatal wounds to be rapidly repaired to restore the wielder's health. Minor injuries are restored easily, and even large missing portions of the body and destroyed vital organs like the heart can quickly be restored at the critical moment before death. Targeting anything other than the holder's head in order to destroy their brain is futile, requiring for a decisive strike to be landed in order to cause any true damage. It does have its limits in repairing the body, as counteracting the curse from Shiro being stabbed by Gibald takes a great deal of time and dealing with the massive backlash from EA clashing with Excalibur takes a number of minutes to restore Saber's health. Its function as a noble phantasm is an absolute defense that completely shields its user in the domain of the fairies, Avalon, the unreachable utopia that King Arthur dreamt of and was said to have gone to after her death. It is the greatest protection in the world that goes beyond defending or reflecting, completely isolating its user in a world completely separate from the regular world. The scabbard dissipates into countless tiny particles in the air and engulfs the user to become a portable fortress that shuts out all interference. It is the bounded field of the tranquil domain of fairies that keeps out all filth from the outside world, and allows nothing to harm the tranquil king that stands in the land of Avalon. The individual is shielded from all destructive interference in the physical realm, transliners from parallel worlds, and multidimensional communication as far as the sixth dimension. It is on the level of true magic, an actual true magic in itself, that transcends all magecraft, and not even the five magics can overcome the barrier. It is said in Arthurian legend that after Arthur received Excalibur, Merlin approached him with a magic sheath that would not allow for a drop of his own blood to be spilled so long as he possessed it. It can be called even more valuable than Excalibur due to its loss being connected to his death. When asked, Your Highness, which do you like better? The sword or the sheath, Arthur is said to have answered that the sword is better without hesitation. Merlin scolded him instead with, Please make no mistake here. The sword slashes the enemy, but the sheath protects you. As long as you have the sheath on you, you will spill no blood and take no wounds. You should truly value the sheath, not the sword. Master's Noble Phantasm While normally useless as a magical artifact, Avalon can also be used as a master's noble phantasm after Saber is summoned. It can be disassembled and sealed inside Saber's master or someone who will constantly be close to her, such as Iris Veal von Einsburn, as a conceptual weapon to aid them with its regenerative abilities. The contract between Saber and a master isn't a requirement to use Avalon's abilities, but having one will provide the user the true benefit of limited immortality by allowing it to obtain magical energy from Saber and fully utilize its effects according to the contract. This allows Kuritsugu to use innate time control, which causes enough damage to shatter bones and tear tendons with brief use, at double his normal level for extended periods of time. However, it only nullifies the damage he receives, he is still burdened by the excessive pain of the injuries. Additionally, it will not heal wounds inflicted by Excalibur. Avalon's effects are less potent for those without the contract, allowing its regenerative abilities to be used only while Saber is close enough to provide magical energy to it. It will not function at all if she is unable to provide it with magical energy by being near its bearer. 
Its functionality increases as she gets closer and becomes able to provide it with more magical energy, and it can be increased further through direct contact with the wielder. It is enough to keep Iris Veal functioning as a person, while she would normally start to break down and lose functions as a human due to her status as the Vessel of the Holy Grail. She needs to be within range of Saber to function normally, while her suffering increases as Saber moves farther away. Avalon can be removed from its user at any time to be passed on to another. Iris Veal is able to manifest it by placing her hand on her chest, concentrating magical energy within her onto her fingertips, and allowing the form of the scabbard to appear within a silhouette of light before finally manifesting. Kiritsugu is able to do the same to implant it into the dying Shiro, and it remains within him for many years. It remains merged with him in the unlimited blade works and heaven's feel roots, but it is discovered during the fate route after Shiro manages to project it to reflect the strike of Meridak. Shiro and Saber must employ a different method to retrieve it from within him, having Saber to gather its form while Shiro shapes it with projection in order to return it to her from across time. Though Saber is already gone when Kuritsugu implants it within Shiro, the residual energy residing within it is enough to resuscitate him. It becomes inert afterward, but it draws him closer to swords and actually changes his elemental affinity and origin to sword as well. Once the fifth holy grail war enters the preparation stage, magical energy starts flowing within Avalon due to it being confirmed that Shiro will summon Saber. After it is used as the catalyst to summon Saber a second time, the connection is fully re-established and it heals him from a number of fatal wounds during the war. Even after separating it from him, it has merged with him to the point where he is able to create a perfect projection of it without any degradation that bypasses all of the steps due to having a complete record of it. After the connection to Saber is gone, it can be said his image of Avalon also disappears. Avalon, Averon, is the paradise in the Arthurian legends, existing in the reverse side of the world at the same coordinates as Britain. It is a small world that was called the Land of the Eternal Spring and the Island of Apples in mythology, the utopia was thought to be derived from the island that produced the Apple of Immortality in Greek mythology. King Arthur is said to dwell in Avalon and will eventually return to lead England to true glory. It is a utopia that may not be granted to beasts which possess wisdom, one that may never be reached. It is a world cut off from the constant decay and destruction of the surface of the planet and, although it is nestled in human history, has no connection to other lands at all. Daytime is filled with spring sunshine and the smell of summer, night is wrapped in the autumn air and stars of winter. It is where flowers of all colors bloom on gently sloping plains. A forest can be clearly seen in the far distance, enveloped by the overlooking sky, the view is evenly divided between the sky and the earth. There is no sign of human civilization in the lands. On earth there are countless flowers and bugs, in the forest there is water and green, and ethereally beautiful fairies lurk in the pond. The paradise people imagine is only an imitation of this place. Here, in this untrodden place, the bounds of a tabooed land, Kinsakuchi, serve as the ends of the island. Though the island has no end, it seems to change like any other land. Further into the island the land turns barren, similar to Britain. It is where fairies got up and went to after the age of gods ended. According to Merlin, the density of magical energy in Avalon is too strong for a human to handle. He thought it should not be called a paradise, but it could be better utilized as a weapon instead. He compares the place to a vacuum, simply breathing in it is enough to end up dead. In one breath a human of the current age would burst from inside out. Merlin came to Avalon near the end of King Arthur's reign while running from an angry Vivian, only to be imprisoned in a tower by her. Unable to die until the end of the world, Merlin remains trapped in his tower even into the 21st century, due to unknown events, the Merlin of the Fate-slash-Prototype universe is no longer confined in the Tower of Avalon. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.